Hello, and welcome everybody to another episode of Pod Strickland. I'm your host, Shwini Poo, and this is episode 388. I'm joined on this Friday uh, Friday morning by my co-host, Prez, that is at underscore Presidente on Twitter. Prez, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Uh, love, lovely game we had versus your favorite player in the West Coast, De'Aaron Fox. So, uh, you know, I'm in, a, I'm in a good mood this morning. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a good victory. Knicks falling down 21 and then coming back winning by double digits. Um, when they would 120 to 109, uh, we will talk about that. We will also unfortunately talk about Julius Randle's season ending uh surgery that he's now undergone. Um, but before we get started, I do have to make a few announcements. First, being that Strickland has Instagram, check that out. That is at Strickland on Instagram. We are posting all kinds of new content on there. The Strickland also has a YouTube channel where we may be watching this podcast. If you are even not done so already, please hit like, subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment. That'd be a huge help to us. The Strickland also has merchandise, which you can find on our website at www.thestrick.land. There's a link that'll take you to the merchandise store. And you can find all types of cool stuff there t shirts, sweatshirts, hats, coffee mugs, water bottles, you name it. We've got it. Strickland. Also has a Patreon, which you can subscribe to. There are a number of tiers. There's a $6 tier that gets you access to Pod Strickland's podcast. That helps every Friday the Prize. You also get access to our news podcast, Takes from Obvious Bozos, that is hosted by Andrew Steele, a.k.a. Doug, along with Zach Letter. And you get access to the Strickland Discord, where the conversation never stops. There for the tiers is a $9 tier that gets you access to Strick and Roll, my solo pod, or our rant and rave with the next more. You also get access to wonderful premium articles by Matthew Marino, one of the best in the business. And now you get access to Strictly NFL, our newest podcast that, you guessed it, is about the NFL. There are further tiers. There's a $15 tier, $30 tier, $50 tier, and $100 tier. That's with a variety of additional benefits. You listen to pod recordings, merchandise discounts, and even potentially hosting a podcast alongside yours. Whether you choose to subscribe or not, this would be possible without you. And none of this would be possible without Cut, one of our wonderful sponsors. Hey, Believe Nation, as you all know, we've partnered with Cut, the social betting platform. Cut is a peer-to-peer betting platform that allows you to bet directly against your buddies and other fans. That's right. You can join the Believe crew, the Believe Knicks crew on Cut today and bet directly against me, Shwini Poo, or Prez. On your favorite sports, pop culture, and politics topics, Cut is the ultimate put-your-money-where-your-mouth-is platform, and it's legal here in New York. Be sure to follow at Cut, K-U-T-T, Bet on all your social media channels and download the app via the App Store or Cut.com. Use code BelieveNix, B-L-E-A-V, Nix, for a 10% deposit bonus. Uh, I am looking currently for the right Bet Online copy, and... I have it. Okay. The tournament is here. Bet online is your bracket headquarters for the season with the best bracket contest out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up until the national championship. You can access the most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices and even track your bracket real-time all the way through the tournament. Head to the Bet Online app today and get in on all the action. Remember, use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome to bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. Um... So look, we can talk about the let's we can just talk about the elephant in the room. Uh so Julius Randle, uh he tried to come back from his dislocated shoulder. The rehab did not go um obviously as hoped for. Um so he officially ruled out for the season yesterday. It looks like he either got surgery then or day before, or maybe today, who the hell knows? But he's getting the surgery. Uh he'll be reevaluated in five months per Nick's PR. Um, so I don't know. I guess what just some thoughts initially for you. Or how, how, how did you feel about that? I, it just kind of sucks, man. I just felt bad for bad for him, first of all, because you know he was uh you know he was putting in work trying to get it stable and, and he he gave more detail on it later um in other interviews, but uh with the way the team was cooking, you know he wanted to play, and we just know his personality, right? The guy plays hurt, and he's gonna try to make it back, and it just kind of, just kind of feel for him. He was having his best year. The Knicks were having their best ball, obviously. Um, and I don't know. I guess aside from Julius, like 
we've talked about it, right? Like our theoretically our title window, if you want to call it that, really begins next year. But the fact that we had like squeaked the door open this year by surprise was not something anyone expected and gave us all something very special to look forward to. And that's not to say the playoffs now can't be special. They still can, but it's a different kind of special, right? Now it's like, ah, could we just punch above our weight and make some noise on our way out, which is still awesome, right? Like that's what we've been expecting and hoping for for the last couple of years. Um, But to just have a, a title, uh, a puncher's chance at fucking with a team like Boston and then having that made infinitely more impossible without Randall now. Um, ah, it's just a tease, man. But, you know, the game plan is the game plan is to compete next year either with this same squad or with an improved squad via trades. I don't know, but um, it just kind of stinks. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I found myself over the course of the game and we'll get into it, right? Like they started off rough down 15, I think what 35, 20 after the first quarter, I didn't even open the strict quarter Twitter. Cause I was like, I know motherfuckers are out here doomerizing like, a, like crazy right now. Like, ah, oh, Julius is out or playoff chances are good. Now the kicks are washed, I guess, but for them to come back and fight to the win, I think showed that like, yeah, maybe they're not Boston, but, there's a lot of other so-called playoff teams that this team could still probably fuck up their couch. So um, by the end of the night, I found myself choosing to be a little more optimistic, but there's no two ways around it. Like that fucking blows, man. Like this team is, is built around two creators and special role players. Um, We don't have spare ball handlers just lying around like a lot of, title teams might um or almost title teams might we're just a very specific build like that so it's just going to be more heavy doses of Jalen and other guys are going to have to step up in the meantime i guess but um yeah i don't know there's no sugar coating it like that shit sucks man like it, it's just an unbelievable stroke of shitty luck um yeah, it sucks. Um, that's obviously true. Uh, I'm very happy that our team and our coach are not uh, populated by or filled with people who seem to believe that, uh, well, you know, OG shouldn't come back now if Randall's out for the season. And, you know, what's the point of the rest of the season and all this shit? Like, I, I don't know. I, I get pretty annoyed when I see people. I hate that shit to stuff like that because like to me it's like dude that's not even how and no professional athlete should be wired that way and any professional athlete that is wired that way are usually guys that underperform and flatter to deceive and and are generally the type of players that are associated with underperformance um and you know even when the knicks fell behind yesterday yeah you get a lot of doomering and it's just stupid it's like dude I don't know. At some point, at some point, you've got to believe that this team over the last two years, especially, and and three of the four years under Tibbs, has consistently shown you that when they get hit, they respond. Um, that they will find a way to keep going. And yeah, is there a ceiling? Of course. They're not winning a fucking championship, or they're not even really a contender without Julius Randle, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and we'll see what condition OG Ananobi is in whenever he gets back on the floor, hopefully. Um, but you know, if he's not a hundred percent, obviously that's, that's going to hurt you too. So like, yeah, I, I get that frustration, but I, I reject the frustration that lends to it's the fault of fucking wallowing and self pity and all this. Shut the fuck up. Like give the team credit. Stop being a fucking bitch. Like that's just how I feel about that. Um, and when that is like this prevailing mindset, as soon as they go down in a game or, Oh my God, what is the point of the rest of the season? Just fucking fuck off forever. Um, 
So I, I don't know. I, I, I hate that fucking mindset. And I think this team, especially if you're a fan of this team, um, has earned way more of way more respect than such absolute pathetic, you know, self pity bullshit fucking mindset. Um, aside from that, uh, moving on to Julius, you know, the injury itself, obviously the injury sucks. Uh, presumably he'll get the surgery and that will, I, I believe the odds are not the odds, but, um, Generally speaking, surgery for a dislocated shoulder, recovery, all that stuff. Um, however long it takes, I think it's a pretty solid bet that it's not like a massive risk of re-injury. It's just he has to get comfortable using the shoulder again after that point. Um, so hopefully, you know, he comes back uh, five months, six months from now, and he's ready to go because um, the Knicks will need him. Um, the other part of this that was pretty fucking annoying for me was, uh, you know, obviously Julius, I think he misspoke. That's what I really think happened. He missed, I think he misspoke to Haynes. He said something about, you know, a few weeks ago or five weeks ago, he had been cleared for contact. I think he said, I, I can pull up, I can pull up the exact verbiage here. Um, but, uh, just give me one second. Uh, here we go. All right. He said this. I want everyone to know that I did everything in my power to get back this season, blah, blah, blah. That was my intention to be playing right now. That's why I didn't opt for surgery when it happened. But what caused me to finally go through with getting surgery was about five weeks ago. I went through a full contact session and re-injured my shoulder. My shit wasn't stable. I felt like I was in the same state when I first dislocated, and it's been an uphill battle ever since. Um, so the reason why uh, this became a, a very big uh, talking point was that the Knicks had and Tibbs specifically, as he's the you know the person that's answering these questions, had specifically stated that Randall had not been cleared for full contact, but that he had been going through controlled contact, which is what had been said. Um, Haynes later went back, I think, on the broadcast. I don't know if he if the if the article itself was edited. Um, that's possible. I can check that also, but. Um, and said that it was not full contact. It was it was actually controlled contact, uh, right? And 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 you know Tibbs was uh, interrogated about this by our uh, wonderful Knicks beat after the game. The the real hard hitting questions that matter. Um, and um, you know, yeah. So this is what it, Haynes went back, and it's it's edited again. Uh, but what caused me to finally go through with getting surgery? I went through a full contact session in pads and re-injured my shoulder. Um, so, like, yeah, look, well, I don't, I don't really think there's a re. Like, if you want to say the Knicks weren't completely forthright about him re-injuring himself, yeah, I get that. Do I think the Knicks had any reason to like, like, I don't really get why they would lie about how he got injured because what, what is it like if he got cleared for full contact? And then he injured himself. Like, there's no reason for them to ever lie about. Well, yeah, he's clear for full contact now. Because what I don't, I don't know. To me, there's no real motivation for them to lie about the status as it's progressing. Um, now, were they forthright after he aggravated it? No, obviously they 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 kept that under wraps, and there can be any number of reasons for that. Um, but uh, to go through to to go back to this, like, I just find it really annoying that on this day where Knicks fans get, you know, you get news of a pretty depressing piece of news of Julius Randle getting hurt for the season. That this entire thing, the, the, the way that the beat covers it, becomes about, oh my God, I can't believe the Knicks lied to me. Like, they owe me so much. It's like, dude, can you just shut the fuck up and stop feeling sorry for yourself? And can you just like report the news? And, and maybe understand that the people that you're reporting this news for are more pissed about the fact and more upset about the fact with for Julius and for the Knicks that he is out for the season. Um, and as far as, like, the validity, you know, I, I again, I don't really think that Tibbs has any reason to have been lying about this. I think that he was pretty forthright. I think that he was probably going through controlled contact throughout this time. And yeah, I mean, maybe five weeks ago he went through it and uh, his shit wasn't 
reacting the way he wanted it to. Tibbs elaborated on that yesterday when he was uh, put through the fire yesterday in his post game, uh, talking about, you know, some days it feels better, some days it doesn't. They gave it until however long they had to make a decision by. And uh, my guess is that this was like a shit or get off the pot moment. And so at this point in time, Julius was like, look, it just hasn't responded the way it has. He got two specialists to give an opinion on it. They both told him that he was risking not just re-injuring it, but also permanent damage in the future. So it was time for him to pull the plug. And, um, you know, he himself said he doesn't regret anything about the process. He was he wanted to do it because he wanted to. And then for the people that are like, oh, why would he do this? Why not just get the surgery right when it happened? Because then he could definitely be healthy for next season. Uh, well, I mean, did you watch the Knicks in January? Because if you watched the Knicks in January, you probably would have seen, oh, wow, this team looks like a fucking championship contender. So that's probably why he didn't get the fucking surgery, uh, which would have immediately ruled him out for the rest of the fucking season. Um, so the fact that people can't understand why him, Julius Randle himself, would not want to get the surgery at that point you got to be delusional or maybe you just didn't play sports or maybe you're not a competitive person. Maybe you're a fucking loser. I don't know. Um, if you don't understand that, then I can't fucking help you. And honestly, don't watch sports because you're a loser. 